Okay, where do you begin with uh, Minister Farrakhan? What kind of a... Do we have a shot at an integrated America where we really do get rid of these fears? Do you think we have a chance at that? Have you given up on that? If there's justice in America for blacks, then blacks will be contented with America. If there's injustice, continued injustice and oppression, yeah. blacks will continue this disaffection with the United States. But, but my reading of your position is, I have the feeling that you've really given this uh, up as a possibility and that you're, you're looking for a black nation with black uh, ownership of business and black uh, control of the of, uh, financial destiny of the membership. Not at all. Separation is an ultimate solution. It is an extreme solution. However, if we can get freedom, justice, and equality within the social, political, and economic order of the United States, that would be better. Uh huh. S uh, so you really you continue to hold out the uh, uh, can a white person be a member of the Nation of Islam? Your nation. There are white Muslims. There, yes. There are. Well, you're smiling. It hasn't always been that way. Um, okay. All right. Uh, if that's the case, then why are you going out of your way to... You invited Gaddafi to speak to your assembly in Chicago on closed-circuit television? Yes. And he, uh, he encouraged the 400,000 black Americans who serve in the armed forces of the United States to revolt and fight the oppressor, and he'd help them, finance them with, with, with munitions? The logic... you, and, and, you know, is this the way we get to our uh, promised land of... Uh, integrated uh, equality for all? Of course, the majority of blacks reject that suggestion. And does Mr. However, Farrakhan suggest however, reject however, it? Of course I do. However, the logic of Mr. Gaddafi appears to be the logic of the Reagan administration for $14 million are being asked for the Nicaraguans, for the Nicaraguans <laughs> yeah. or to overthrow the government. If we Nicaragua. can support Contras for the purpose of overthrowing Nicaragua, why should we be so indignant that Haddafi would tell American blacks to support the overthrow of the American uh, racist system? Is that your exactly. position? Okay, let's go over this once again. Uh, here's what you said. Um, here's, here's what you said. This is not so funny. Uh, here was your statement regarding... Uh, uh, this is perceived by most people who saw this and heard about it and read about it as a Jewish slur. Here's what you said. May we see that? David. Now, uh, you've, you're probably getting tired of explaining this. Uh, did you say gutter religion or dirty religion? First, let me say this, that your religion is not just what you profess. Your religion is what you practice. Jesus told his disciples, be ye doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. Lying, thievery, injustice, and murder is unclean. And using that to shield your what I call dirty practice under God's name is practicing dirty religion. Would you say the same thing to Haddafi? I would say that any person that violates principles of righteousness and decency yeah. Does is he? practicing dirty religion. Does he? Here's a man who exports terrorism. Here's a man that the president of Egypt has condemned as an exporter of a, a man no. who... In, now in, you're going to give us a long speech about how do we know in the white press and maybe... No, you do let not me say see, this. All right. Let me say this. Yeah. Um, Terrorism, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. That's what Menachem Begin says. In that's, what, that's what the people who fought for Israel want to say. Menachem Begum, Begin was a terrorist, and now he's accepted as a great statesman. Well, okay, but my, my, my point is, who decides what terrorism is acceptable? You? I'm not that judge. But you certainly brought your judgment to... Uh, to Israel in this, I, uh, in this I said state. exactly that which is truth. You cannot refute what I've said. Israel has not had any peace in 40 years, and it does not look as though she will have it, peace it, it, because it, it, there is no peace structured on injustice. Uh,
Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well from wherever you're watching me from. This is Ellie from Africa and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So uh, I want us to talk about um, Louis Farrakhan and there is a lot and there are a lot of speculations about him and his speeches about Judaism, uh, the way he criticizes politics in the United States of America, his view on the black nation. And uh, in this inter thrilling interview and in this sit up, you are going to realize that he, he he boldly comes out and talks a lot about how black people have been uh, put under captivity in the United States and some other European countries. He comes out clear to say that um, there is a lot potentiality, there is a lot of potential when the black people are, give, are given the opportunity to do whatever they can do better. So. Um, we all know that uh, Farrakhan's view and comments, particularly regarding race, Judaism, and uh, American politics, have sparked significant controversy and have been a source of division and debate. But how different is this interview that I'm going to share with you? So uh, despite this, he remains a notable figure in the political and religious space. So let's watch this and see whatever he has to share uh, and whatever he has to say about the blacks. How have we been enslaved as the black people in the United States or in other uh, European countries? Welcome back and let's dive into this video. Please let me know whatever you think of the same video in the comment section. You know what? Well, it, it is a fact. Israel has a lap full of problems, as does America. There's no doubt about it. You know, it's going to be real hard to argue with you regarding the grievances. And I certainly think it's a mistake to get into a contest about whose atrocity is the worst atrocity. Nevertheless, are you here to say that the Jews are not entitled to any home, homeland anywhere? For 40 years, the Jewish state has existed, and they've had problems defining what is a Jew? Once we can define what is a Jew, then we can talk about a Jewish homeland. What is the definition of a Jew? And what is the definition of a member of, uh, of a Muslim? Now, a you Muslim, know, nobody's, okay. certainly like most religions, you're fractured yourself. Is, so, uh, Jew is not a race. But what's Jew, your point? My what? point is, I can define what a Muslim is. A Muslim is one who submits to do the will of God. What is a Jew? Yes, but then, from then on, we get all kinds of... We, we, just give me a second here. <laughs> defining a Muslim would... Uh, you'd get into an argument, for example, with Wallace D. Muhammad on the issue of defining a Muslim. So, my point is... I yeah, think we both would agree. Wallace D. Right. Muhammad would agree with me that a Muslim is one who okay. submits to do the will of God. Okay. You called Hitler a great man, and now you're going to tell us that you didn't mean great as necessarily positive. I mean, for a man who... Uh, you did say that, didn't you? You're not going to deny you said Hitler was Chris, a great... Let's put that in context. Okay. Some Jewish leaders likened me to a black Hitler. They did. I took umbrage at that remark. That's true. I said the only way you can compare me with Hitler is that Hitler rose Germany up from the ashes. We are trying to rise black people up from the ashes, but don't compare me with your wicked killers. That's what I said. So Hitler may have killed six million Jews, but his trains ran on time. Is that your point? Hitler is no friend of black people. If Hitler had his way, he would have killed all black people also. All right, so, so you, I you condemn, not, you condemn I Hitler. I could not be laudatory of Hitler. I just made a statement of fact. Yeah, but... No, you can't, you can't call a person great and then step forward after the fact and claim that that's not... Re that you, I'm you very misunderstood. sorry, Mr. Donahue, but the Bible calls Babylon great, but Babylon wasn't okay, good. Okay, all right. Pharaoh was great, but, but he wasn't th good. There's something... Hitler is a great and consequential man, but not a good man. Yes. That's all. I'll tell you this. Let me say this. Here's the... Incident, does God talk to you, Minister Farrakhan? Does God talk to you? Do you mean, do I hear God in yes. my ear? No, of course not. Uh, are you a prophet? No, I'm not. So you are then, so you really don't have a whole, you don't have any special uh, divine stuff that I don't have, right? I don't know. That, that's I mean, big. Uh, uh, 
Well, that's a, that, that's a, I think that's a very important concession. I appreciate very much the humility with which you confess to being a mortal human being, subject to error like all of us. And yet you do, you do have a kind of, you have a messianic posture about you. Um, you do, if you are honest to say you're not a prophet, but you present at the podium as one. Uh, f sort of a follower of Muhammad. And uh, that's the problem. You have, you know, you have every right to practice your religion. I don't want to sound patronizing, but, you know, once we don't allow people to do that, we really have a bigger problem than we can possibly imagine. But you do not have the right to, to claim absolute truth, and that's what I hear from you. You argue with, you disagree with Minister Farrakhan, you disagree with God. That's pretty. That's pretty Sir, arrogant thing Mr. to do. Mr. Swaggart and other white theologians take a very strong theological position. Yes, they do. You don't question their right to believe in the correctness of their vision. But I, I certainly believe, question their right to impose it on other people. I believe in the correctness of the position of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and I stand on that position. Okay. You were born Louis Eugene Walcott in uh, Boston, uh, the Roxbury section of Boston. You married once, no scandal there. Nine children. Yes. Uh, the, younger, uh, uh, the youngest of uh, whom live with you in what I'm told is a predominantly white suburb. Is that so? It's integrated. <laughs> uh, but, but I, okay, I assume you're proud of the fact that you live in a community that I assume you feel is the forerunner of what you would like to see all America become. Is that so? I live in a nice community and I'm proud to live there. I had very much difficulty in living in that community. Yeah. But that has been overcome. Yeah. You know, you really are, you know, your timing is perfect. Your timing is perfect. Uh, if it wasn't for you, it would be somebody else. Uh, we have ourselves a whole bunch of problems here. We have an administration that appears to have been going out of its way to alienate itself from your brothers and sisters. We have a rise, as NBC uh, News viewers might have noticed uh, last night on the news. The Klan is back in bigger and bigger numbers. So we shouldn't be surprised that you're drawing big crowds, Mr. Farrakhan. Here's the question. The problem is, sir, that I was drawing large crowds You've always four and five years ago. Okay, but the white press didn't notice. The, that's oh, right, okay. without the press's notice. Now, now look, at, we still got more. I got another statement here. Now, here we go. This is Milton Coleman. Uh, you're going to what? Uh, you wanted to bring murder to his wife? Or, uh, now you're going to give me a long speech about how this isn't what you meant? Here's your statement. This is, a, remember the Coleman thing, Washington Post? And if, and if a woman lie down with this kind of person, that, that person, the woman, becomes a candidate. Mr. Donahue. Yeah, go ahead. You have certainly cut up that tape. You never kept my words in context well, at all. Then here, th if I had threatened the life of Milton Coleman, why was I not brought before the courts of law in the United States and punished? That is a punishable offense. Uh -huh. I did not threaten his life, and you know that if you listen to that tape. What was the first line on that tape? He says that you should... Sir, the way that tape was doctored, you okay. made it to appear as though I said exactly you what you proposed you that I said. That. Okay. I did not say Here's that. Here's the point. Here's the point. This kind of rhetoric, this kind of rhetoric jeopardizes babies of all color. Um, it's not consistent with uh, the tradition of Jesus, Muhammad, Martin Luther King, this is bellicose. This, sir, this, all of the prophets, when they spoke, they so you issued are a prophet, threats. Then. You're I a said pro all of the prophets, when they spoke, they issued threats <clears throat> and warnings. I think in the role of a teacher, we must look at the condition of black people in this country, the condition of America, mm -hmm. and if the country continues in the path that the country is going, all intelligent people see the country going the way of Rome, the way of ancient Babylon, mm -hmm. the way of Sodom and Gomorrah. Something has to be done of a positive nature yeah. to turn this around. You know, let's get this in. 
Who's going to say that we don't have problems? College basketball. Uh, listen, is this, this isn't funny. The, now, these young men are innocent. But if corruption has hit the NCAA final uh, teams in the basketball tournament without having yet proved their case, these young men are innocent. Let's get that in. That does not look good for us. General Dynamics <clears throat> on the take. They're uh, building uh, submarines, and the guy who ran the company is hiding now in Greece. General Electric, top 10, Fortune 500. Minister Farrakhan is right when he says we have a problem. The question is whether is you're solution? contributing to uh, the, 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 the possibility of making it worse. The question is, you know, Mr. How many babies? Uh, how many babies are going to be quite literally dead in the crossfire of the prophets? Mr. That, that's Donahue, the thing. That's the, the thing question that's is. Yes, there's corruption. Yes, blacks are suffering. Yeah. But what is the solution to the problem? In my judgment, sir, the solution has to revolve around two things. A united front of all black leaders and black organizations to address the problem of black unemployment and black suffering. We are blessed to get out of the economy of the United States this year approximately $204 billion, making us the 12th richest country on earth. I'm talking about black people. Yes. With that kind of money redirected into the hands of black people, we could redress our own grievances rather than standing on corners or begging white people to do for us what we should now do for ourselves. That, I believe, is a solution to the problem. We are in